I'm Jeff Wiener with Digicom. I'm EJ McComb with Digicom. And today we're going to be talking to you about Avaya IP Office Release 9.1 Server Edition Resiliency. I'm going to spend the first minute and a half just describing uh, an architectural drawing of what Server Edition is and how it functions. And then I'm going to pass it over to EJ. I'm going to hand the marker over to him and he's going to explain Server Edition from a technical architectural point of view, how the systems can fail to one another. I'm also presuming that the viewer has uh, knowledge of preferred edition and to some extent or to a great extent IP office in general this is going to be a fairly technical discussion so if you don't have that level of knowledge then take a step back watch some of our other videos on what is IP office and preferred edition etc and then come back and watch this one so let me draw a quick diagram as I said so let's just say we have a 500 via IP office 500 v2 cabinet we have that at site one and then we have another 500 v2 cabinet at site two what we're going to introduce now is this server edition and this falls all under release 9.1 so what we have here is this cabinet is connected to here this cabinet is connected to here effectively we actually have we should be drawing that to the cloud and then up to here because it's maybe going through the cloud. This could technically be at the same location, but we're getting into semantics. So the purpose of um, the, the, the IP office from a server edition point of view is we've taken the brain essentially uh, out of the V2 cabinet. So on the preferred edition, the brain is sitting inside there and we've offloaded that and the programming, provisioning, management, licensing, um, applications are now all residing on a single box. So effectively these two or three or four or five and we can keep going up to 32 sites are now all sharing the information that's contained in that one server edition cabinet. I'm going to pass the, the marker over to you EJ so you can continue this discussion and explain uh, the resiliency and how it works from a V2 cabinet or uh, IP office perspective. All right, so assuming that this is server edition normal versus server edition select, Jeff, you were right, there are 32 sites that we could join to. So essentially the same capacities as we would have with a small community network. But the big difference would be the server edition itself. Inside the server edition, which can live physically or in a virtual machine, we have a number of different components that matter. One of them is the 1X server, so our 1X portal. One of them is a contact recorder. Uh, one of them is the IP office itself, and I'll go into more detail on that. And then the most importantly is the voicemail system. So all these guys live inside this virtual realm, including the IP office. So can this all sit on one box technically, all virtualized? Yeah, absolutely. Are they, so they're separate images, you can't have one image with all this inside it. It is one image with all this inside it. Ah. Each of these is a silo inside one big installation. And so whether it's virtual on some VMware stack somewhere, VMware ESXi 5 dot something or other and up, or whether it's on a physical box like one of the uh, Avaya Supply Dell boxes, either way this sits as one image and all these components run within it. And so what makes it interesting I think is that when you first look at resiliency, uh, each of these cabinets talks to the server edition as you said earlier on. And so they share the, the component, the voicemail component. They share the 1x server and so forth and even one uh, even uh, contact uh, recorder but in order to make this effectively redundant we can take this entire back image and put in a secondary server edition known as the server edition secondary so let me just do this secondary. all right and bring this into the equation and once the secondary uh, server gets added each of the IP offices end up having a link to it as well as the server edition. And so what's going on is uh, whenever we leave a voicemail on the main server edition, it's being replicated. So this line here that goes in between the two of them is probably the most important line. And this line here ends up doing a couple of things. One of them is a heartbeat. So it's able to tell if the other one's up there or not. Uh, the second one is it's doing SMTP. And then lastly, it's doing voice so that technically if a phone was registered to the secondary server edition, uh, it could speak to the, the first server edition 
if we have trunks on the second server edition and on the first server edition, we can have ARS such that the IP Office cabinet V2 right here goes to grab lines. If none are available here, it grabs them out of here. So take a step back so for a second. Let's say you, you don't have the second box, you only have one box. Mm -hmm. this, this link is lost. Mm -hmm. What happens and what does this phone system look like? It looks the same as he always did. So unfortunately, he doesn't have any voicemail because his, he's separated from the main server edition. So this is assuming, again, no secondary server edition, right? Okay, so you've taken that out. So now what happens, so you have lines, that, that also presumes you have lines coming into here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you have lines coming into here and it loses its connectivity to its server edition, mm -hmm. uh, this site here can still take inbound sure, calls. it's self-sustaining. It make just outbound calls, but it doesn't have voicemail. That's right. So it loses the voicemail, but it still has its dial plan. It still right. has, it could, it, and it, so, but it doesn't have an auto attendant, so it would fail over to a reception, for example. That's right. If exactly. we introduce this box, I know you just erased mm -hmm. these lines, no but problem. if we go ahead and redraw them. So it lost this link. What happens here? Now this box here will now start talking to that cabinet. Exactly, right amazingly so. And so it keeps all its this extensions. Guy, because this guy is running specifically out of the group here, because this guy is running his own IP office, and he's running his own voicemail system, which is redundant to the first voicemail system. It can take messages for you, it can provide the correct greeting, etc. even though it doesn't have the connection to the first server edition. Got it. <clears throat> Once that connection restores, these two have been passing messages anyway, so as soon as this guy is able to talk to the original server edition, all of his messages are already in the mailbox waiting for him. Capacity? Capacity of a normal server edition, 2,500 uh, extensions across 32 locations. The maximum on that box itself, if you were to bless all the phones against it and forget the 500s, for example, would be 2,000. 2,000 to one cabinet, 2, but 25 cabinet. in the whole thing. So you That's could right. have, got it, That's okay. Right. So you could have 2,000 on this cabinet, 500 on this cabinet, and no V2s at all. Got it. As long as you were willing to give up the gateways in the local location. Remember, these gateways serve as a major, majorly important function, and that is the telco, right? So as they get cut off from the equation, we still still have lines in the case that you've got a 500 V2. Okay, and if you have SIP trunks, the SIP trunks can fail. Same thing. Yeah. See, SIP trunks still, again, come to the IP office five, uh, uh, 500 V2. If mm -hmm. we didn't have but, the V2 well, here... Well, let's they say they you have your phones. SIP trunks, they come into here, but then mm -hmm. you've lost your connectivity here. Can the SIP trunks fail? Well, I guess they will. They'll come into the server edition still, so you'll still have your dial tone. This, keeping in mind, this cabinet's now failed. Well, SIP trunks, that would be up to you and your telco, right? If it was Digicom, for sure, we would just fail your SIP trunks at this site to your SIP trunks on the server edition, and voicemail would get it, and this site would sort of be out of commission. Now, the phones on this site, supposing that the phones are IP office, uh, are, are five, or sorry, are, are IP phones, what one would likely do is all these phones would start talking to the server edition. These SIP lines, because they lost registration to the 500 V2 cabinet, would again be sending through calls to the server edition. So you wouldn't miss a beat because all the SIP lines are coming in here now. Got it. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to do another video on select edition? Yeah, sounds great. All right. So if you uh, click the link at the end of this video, we'll take you over to our select edition redundancy and we'll continue this conversation over there. I'm Jeff. I'm EJ. And we're both with Digicom. Thank you.